The Mundabidi is Western Australia's world-class adventure cycling and bikepacking trail covering over a thousand kilometers as a path through the forest. Here's a look at how I've been planning my up and coming trip. First, the Mundabidi Trail Foundation website. Really, really useful, tons of information. And if you sign up and become a member, you get access to some really great features including one of my favorites, the online ride planning tool. This tool is really awesome because uh, you can quickly and easy put, easily put in your point, points of interest or uh, towns or huts that you're traveling to. So for example, on my first day, I'll be going from the trailhead in Mundaring to Wangong Hut. And if I calculate that in this tool, it will show me the distance, elevation gain, a little image as well, little path moves with the icon there pretty cool uh, and what that allows me to do is then plug in the specific information into my uh, spreadsheet which i'll be showing in a minute uh, another really really amazing resource and tool is the mundabidi trail community facebook page this is awesome so many riders contributing and uploading their images onto the page really really great information about what they're what they're coming across as they're riding uh, yeah really awesome check that out um, but one of the greatest features of the Facebook page is actually the files section uh, which has uh, you know different routes that have been uploaded the uh, difficulty rating spreadsheet uh, planning so itinerary planning and this is actually where I got my planner which I'll have a look at in just a sec uh, cool thing about this page is if you've got a question you can just search um, you know, where can I buy gas canisters? Where can I stay when I get to Pemberton? Uh, and if you search for these things, you will most likely get an answer. It's really, really comprehensive. It's fantastic. Next most awesome resource, well worth looking at, is the DBCA website, the Department of Biodiversity Con Conservation and Attractions. This is really important that you check this out. It's fabulous for looking at if there are any changes that need to be um, taken into consideration with regards to the trail itself for example diversions so if there's a burn happening in the forest like this one uh, there is a 19 kilometer diversion in place due to prescribed burning and if you click on the map really great information and you will see these out on these on the trail as well uh, so take these into consideration um, when you're planning your routes. Speaking of, I like to use Ride With GPS, really good mapping tool, I highly recommend. Um, I've got the whole route loaded here on my screen, the Mundabidi Trail, 1,055 kilometers, 12,898 meters of elevation. Pretty handy to see it overall, you know, where it goes through, what it passes through. You can change the map types as well if you want but what I actually like to do is create uh, maps for each day of my ride uh, which I've done in the same tool uh, and numbered them for each day including where I'm planning to finish up my ride for the day pretty handy just so at a glance I can load these into my bike computer I can see what is the total distance and elevation for the day and as I'm riding my computer will tell me you know how much time has elapsed how far have I ridden how far do I have to go useful things like that plus the turn by turn navigation is really cool once I've created all these routes uh, in ride with GPS I put them into a thing called a collection not really critical to do but it's just a nice little feature that shows me uh, all the days that I'm riding uh, based on the routes that I've uploaded and adds them to the to the map pretty neat once I've created all these individual day routes I actually synchronize them to my hammerhead Karoo which is my bike computer load them up so I can use them on the day for trail riding but also in the hammerhead dashboard I create all of these points of interests this is really really handy for me i've flagged here where i can get food where i can get water here's uh, an example of uh, a primary school 
that has a tap out the front where I can get some water and I have confirmed that that does exist and work and of course the huts as well you know uh, where I'll be staying uh, where there might be toilets where there might be a rest stop a grocery store fuel station etc really handy to have that and those points of interest will appear on my bike computer as I'm riding uh, and if I tap on one of them I can uh, very easily navigate to them especially if they're slightly off the trail one other thing I'd like to quickly show is another mapping alternative or backup, which is the case for me. A lot of people actually take paper maps with them when they do the trail. Um, on this occasion, I'll be using my bike computer. I'll have also though a backup on my phone, um, which I'm showing right now. Uh, so this is a great little app you can get in your favorite app store. Just search for Mundabidi and you'll find it for a small fee. Really, really great. General trail information, trail uh, closures, diversions, drinking water locations. So this is all really, really useful stuff and well worth having. But the real power in this app actually is the map. So, you know, like any other map, it shows all the points, or points of interest. But where the real value is, is that this map actually works offline completely offline so if you don't have any uh, cell phone signal uh, or Wi-Fi you can use this map in offline mode uh, and if you turn on the GPS feature it'll show your current location on that map as well so super useful when you have no signal your bike computers flat your paper maps have gone up in flames really great so check that one out as well so what I do is uh, use this online planning tool in the Mundabidi Trail Foundation website, which I can access as a member. And using one of the incredible files that I've downloaded from Facebook, from the Mundabidi Trail Community uh, Facebook page, I then create an Excel spreadsheet. So my Excel spreadsheet has from and to, distance, total distance covered, elevation meters, elevation for the day, which day it is, how many days is my trip, whether I'm staying in a hut or in paid accommodation in a town, planning for meals and eating, planning for water, planning for supplies and accommodation. And here you'll see on the first day, I'll be doing around 77 kilometers from the trailhead in Mundaring to Wangong Hut. It is a hut, it's flagged here as green. And I've got a bit of an idea on what I need to do with regards to food. And on this occasion, I need to pack everything on my bike for um, breakfast the next day, morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, and dinner. But the next day when I ride from Wangong to Dwelling Up Town, and I'll be staying in a paid accommodation so I can shower and wash, I'll be able to grab morning tea at a cafe and buy my lunch there as well. They'll make me up a roll or a sandwich. Um, and then I'll probably have a feed at the pub, steak and chips or something when I get to, to dwelling up. So this is my little planner. Um, some big, big-ish days in here, for me anyway, 120 Ks, uh, lots of elevation, really handy. The other thing I have in my spreadsheet here is my pack list broken down I guess sort of in compartments here to you know the clothes I'm taking my sleep system my tools and spare parts uh, my kitchen stuff and eating first aid personal things food tech etc and then where will I put those things on the bike this was something I thought would be pretty useful. So my handlebar roll on the handlebar, that will contain my sleep system, or all the things I need for setting up uh, in the hut at night. Uh, handlebar pouch, things I need quick access to. Coffee, very important. <laughs> uh, snack bag, uh, sorry, feed bags, top tube bag, frame bag, rack, left rack, sort of pannier area, top bag on the rack and so on. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how I'm setting it up. Uh, yeah, as for electronics, just a few little things. Phone, drone, spare batteries, charge battery. Um, I'll have some ear phones 
uh, wristwatch, and just charge cables for um, for those things. Not taking much tech, even the drone is a push. Um, I picked up this DJI Neo the other day. It only only weighs about 130 grams. I thought, why not try that on the trail? Try and get some fancy shots. Let me know in the comments below how you do your planning and I'll see you in the next video.